We're here at the Avalon in downtown Boston, right across the street from Fenway Park, where everybody's getting ready for the Jägermeister Music Tour, featuring Stone Sour, Shadows Fall, and Lacuna Coil. We're joined by Roy Mayorga, drummer extraordinaire of Stone Sour, and, um... How are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm staying dry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, it's pretty, uh, wet and sleety and snowy out there, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, just, um, are you excited about the show tonight, and... Absolutely. I'm always excited to play here in Boston. It's always uh, my, one of my favorite places in the East Coast to play other than my hometown, which is New York City. New York City. Yeah. All right, cool. So um, do you prefer to play in small venues like this or in larger open-air amphitheater type venues like the like the Tweeter Center where you guys played last September? Well, I kind of prefer, I mean, I come from more of the smaller club like era. So I, I kind of prefer it more because you're more in, more in tune with the crowd. You can see people better. You can make more con uh, eye contact with the crowd. I always feel so far away and removed from a, from a crowd when I play the bigger places. I mean, it's great too. It's a good feeling, but I like being more in, intimate, you know, with with the people. What's your uh, favorite song to play live from the from the set? Um, lately, I've been really digging playing Helen Consequences. Yeah, I really love playing that song. It's a uh, pretty high energy song mm -hmm. so I really enjoy that one cool, cool. and uh, who would you say is the funniest member of Stone Sour and who would you say is the most serious member I would say the funniest member definitely Corey <laughs> <laughs> actually there's no one really that takes themselves so seriously in this band I mean we, we take ourselves seriously to an extent but not to the point where you don't know how to have fun I think everybody in this band pretty much has a lot of fun and you know just love life you know all right. So, um, could you tell us a little bit about your pre-Stone Sour background stuff? Um, well, prior to Stone Sour, I was um, playing for playing drums for Sepultura for a stint for that last tour when they did uh, they first um, put out Dante Twenty One. Uh, before that, was uh, I had another band called A Bloom, which was with members of St of Soulfly. Before that, was Soulfly. Before that, I was with uh, Dave Navarro and. Vanilla Ice, Ozzy Osbourne, um, I'm going back and back, uh, Crisis, we're from New York City, um, Thorn, which is another uh, Roadrunner band, Shelter, which is another Roadrunner band, um, Nausea is actually one of my first bands, which are from New York, we're like a punk thrash metal band from New York City, and a bunch of other bands you probably wouldn't know of, but I've basically been been out doing this now for over 22 years wow. playing drums for about 30 now over 30 years and uh this is my last stop this is the band i want to stay with you know yeah. i mean I've, I've always had that path of mercenary drumming in front of me but i mean that's something that wasn't my choice but i kind of had to go with it until i found the right band to be with so i think i've definitely found the right band and it's definitely the band i've been looking for my whole life and i'm just happy I'm, i found it Wow, that's fantastic. So, how did you decide? Uh, how did you get into drumming? You know, um, you know, wh what did you do to you know, kind of fulfill like your dream of drumming? I guess. Well, how I got into drumming, that was more like an more an instinctual thing. I mean, I was really I didn't really have any conscious choice of it. I was just I've always kind of been that way. I guess out of the womb, per se. That that's what my mom tells me. I mean, she's the one who pretty much is responsible for me playing drums right now at this point she noticed what I was doing as a kid and uh, basically drums chose me man you know and I just went with it after after you know seeing what I saw on television you know like wow that's what I want to be and I already knew what I wanted to be right from when I was you know a kid and I just worked at it and worked at it you know until I got to now did you get started more like through like school bands or did you just you just did it on your own? I was on my own, man. I mean, I've been playing since I was like three or four years old before school. And of course, I, I ended up taking it in school just so I can get out of classes because I didn't <laughs> want to be stuck, you know, pushing the pencil. I just wanted to, I wanted to push other, other wooden objects called sticks. So I was always, you know, that hyperactive kid, you know, couldn't settle down. So it was actually a good outlet for me. And I'm glad I, you know, had the chance to do that. I did learn a lot, you know, being in music class. I ended up learning how to read music, you know. I said I could read so I can get into class. I totally lied my way into it. <laughs> I basically played by ear and just, like, pay, looked at other kids, how they were, okay, that's a quarter note, that's an eighth note, okay, I get it. So I basically just, you know, 
shuffled my way through it. <laughs> I know you do some composing for films and oh, things of that research. sort. <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I do on, uh, when I'm not touring. So, so I know that you compose on the piano, am I right? Yeah, yeah so, but, uh, but are, um, are drums still your overall favorite instrument to play? Oh, absolutely, I mean, that's, the, that's a, uh, it's a whole other way of more of a primal way of expressing myself as opposed to piano is a more elegant, classier way to express my feelings, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, definitely drums it, it would be my first choice, but you can't, you can only write so much on drums, I mean, you can't write melodies unless you tune your drums melodically, which I do. Which, if you know, I do have many different colors and sounds on my drums, so I do write in a way on drums, but I do write mostly on piano if I'm writing songs. Okay, and um, what do you like to do to pass the, the long hours on the tour bus? Um, well, luckily, we have killer technology these days where I can have a virtual orchestra with me, so I do a lot of work on my Logic Pro 7 and. Uh, do a lot of writing when I'm, you know, not doing anything during the day, or I'm playing some video games, you know, whatever, yeah. secretively. <laughs> <laughs> um, what other bands, other than Stone Sour, of course, are you listening to right now? Um, these days. These days, I actually been listening to a lot older stuff, like stuff I grew up on, like a lot of '70s stuff. I've been listening to a lot of Fleetwood Mac. <laughs> <laughs> I really love the production of those records, and Mick Fleetwood's a great drummer. I mean. Listen to a lot of Thin Lizzy, ACDC, Black Sabbath, Zeppelin, The Who. I'm in my 70s phase right now, so mm -hmm. I'm listening to a lot of that kind of stuff. I do, you know, venture out and listen to some electronic music. I listen to, you know, uh, Lady Tron sometimes, or um, Peaches. I don't know if you know who she uh, is. No, I'm not familiar. They're great. Um, what else? A lot of classical music. I listen to a lot of uh, modern composers, such as um, Krzysztof Pendereski from Poland, uh, Ligeti or Bartok. Those are more of my inspiration with writing and stuff. I listen to a lot of that, a lot of Pink Floyd. So <laughs> cool. I, I get I got a decent you know palette of things I listen to just for inspiration. Awesome, awesome. Um, could you tell us who some of your non-musical influences are? I mean, like uh, influences or inspirations that aren't musicians as well. Well. Um, I would have to say just venturing out into you know the different cities I've been in through around the world, like just just being in Dubai for that one day. We we were there like like a few weeks ago playing a show. That was just an inspiration. Totally just just seeing how the culture is and listening to some of the music that's around there and smelling things, hearing things. I mean, like people talking. Uh, you know, that, that, those kind of things inspire me. Really, so. just the diversity. And yeah. Like that. yeah. Scenery. You know. Yeah. You know, uh, anything. Mm -hmm. A movie. A movie even will inspire me to do something. You wow. know. Cool, cool. And um, what are you just in general looking forward to the most right now? What I'm looking forward to the most? Well, at the end of this tour, we take a long, nice little break. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that, to spending some time with my wife and going on vacation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we definitely need a break. Yeah. <laughs> And um, also, of course, you know that after the Stone Sour tour, maybe in another year or so, Corey and uh, Jim are going to go back to Slipknot yeah. for some time. Yeah. Do you have any plan? Have you made any plans for what you're going to do during that yet? Or and, uh, I'm working currently on doing a solo record of just um, kind of what I was talking about with uh, those different composers I was mentioning. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be working on something that's more percussive. Um, more on a modern composer tip, a little more darker sounding with a classical edge kind of music. Um, my drums with a couple of timpani players, some Celeste players, xylophone players, violinists, cellists, bassists, some oboe players. Make, make it, I'm going to work with those elements and make create something and possibly perform it. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you very, very much. And uh, I hope to... Hope to do this again sometime. Right on, man.